So we're still in part one of Grenade by Alan Gratz. And we're back to Hideki speaking on page 90. And where we're picking up is right after he has been in his family tomb, he's found his father who's severely injured, um, gravely injured. And he's kind of hearing his father's input on the war. He's getting caught up with where his family is and what's happening. And a soldier is entered. So at first he doesn't know if the soldier is an American soldier that he should be fearful of or a Japanese soldier who maybe would be there to help. And it turns out it is a Japanese soldier, but he doesn't seem to want to help. He's very much looking for his own safety, his own well-being. He doesn't care that he's in a family sacred tomb. This is going to be his hideout. And he starts eating the offerings that are there, which um, horrible insult. If you think about it, if you've made a sacrifice or an offering, and and somebody comes in and just starts eating it all. Um, for for many of you, it might be like if somebody came in your church and started taking all the offering plate or just like shoveling in the communion bread or whatever it might be. Um, so it's it's an insult as it is. And this guy's eating all the food and he tells them, like, get out. This is going to be my hiding place now. I don't care that this is your family's tomb. It belongs to me. I outrank you. I'm a Japanese soldier. And obviously Hideki's angry. He doesn't understand why his own side's doing this. He just needs somebody to help with his dad. And instead, uh, he has to leave. So he pretty much carries his dad out to underneath a tree. Um, and he's like, I'm going to go get help. I'm going to go get a doctor. And his dad says, no, we don't have time. Like, I'm dying. I know I'm dying. Um, I don't want to be alone as I die. I, I want to be here with my son. I want to know that I found you. And he says, in fact, it's a blessing that I got to be here with you. But then he goes on to tell him a few important things. The first thing he says is, I, basically, I have a task for you. Like, make this worth it. I need you to go find your sister. The rest of my family, my wife, my other son, myself, we've all died in this war. It's just you and your sister left. You've got to go find her. you got to make sure she, she is safe and you have to stay together with her. Keep this family going. Uh, protect your sister. That's all that matters. And, and Hideki's confused because he's like, Dad, you were so brave. You did so, so many great things. And his dad's like, I was not brave. I was terrified. I ran away. I'm dying. Like, don't go tell people I was brave. I was a coward. And Hideki's confused because this curse is only supposed to be every third generation. And so he says, uh, Dad, no, you don't have the curse. That's me. You're confused. You're like delirious in this state. And his dad says, no, but Shigatomo wasn't a coward either. He was really brave. And I see this now. And it, it could mean many things. He's saying, I understand this now. I understand what he did. Um, and he's like, and one day you will too. But part of the bravery that he could be referring to in general, whether you run a battle or stay, the fact that you signed up for war, you willingly made that sacrifice and went into this, you're brave. You have shown bravery because not every man or woman would do that. So he's saying he was brave. Um, and, and this has got to, they haven't really said this, but it's got to change Hideki's point of view. If he's always said, I'm just like Shigatomo, I'm a coward, and now his dad's saying, no, Shigatomo was super brave, you have to imagine that that's going to shape Hideki's mindset into thinking, maybe I can be brave too. Maybe everything I've known has changed. So he decides as his father passes, because his father does pass, I'm going to live up to his wish, I'm going to be brave, and I'm going to go find my sister.